Hi, welcome back to my channel and for today's video, we will be talking about the bag measurable functions. So thank you so much for your undying support and if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be updated on a lot of videos that I'll be uploading soon and you'll be updated for this growing playlist of real analysis. Okay, so let's start now. Um, in order for us to introduce the concept of Lebesgue measurable function, we will introduce first with this proposition. So it says here that given that you have a function f and it's defi defined on a measurable domain E, then the following statements are equivalent. So this one is equivalent to 2 and um, this one, this one, and so on. So um, we have this set here uh, containing x in E such that um, f of x is greater than c or it could be greater than or equal to c it could be less than c or it could be less than or equal to c and they're all measurable and each of these statements from 1 to 4 implies that for all uh, c in r union the positive and negative infinity the set x element of e such that f of x equals c is measurable so we will label this as number 5. So in order for us to show that this proposition is actually true, we will show the proof of that. So let's start first by proving uh, 1 implies 4. So observe that um, the set x um, in E, such that f of x is less than or equal to c, this is the same as E minus the set x element of E such that f of x is greater than c. Okay, now we assume number 1 to be measurable and observe that this is measurable already and this E is also is measurable. This simply tells us that this is also measurable, meaning to say that 1 implies 4. So the same thing happens with this one. If the 4 here implies 1, I could write this um, in a way that I can write an equation in which 1 is related to 4 or 4 is related to 1, implying that um, 4 implies 1. Also, um, it's pretty obvious to show that 2 if and only if 3 in the sense that um, for 2, you can actually, uh, for 3 rather, you can actually write that as E minus the, the 2. And then so um, they, they're all measurable. Observe that since all um, intersection of countable collection of measurable sets is measurable, then um, our set like this is actually the, in the countable intersection of this one, f of x greater than c minus 1 over n, um, n from 1 to infinity. So this one is measurable, which simply tells us that um, because this one in here is measurable, it says here that 1 implies 2 holds. And also, um, I would have this set here, f of x um, greater than c. I can write that as um, the union of the set x in E such that f of x is greater than or equal to c plus 1 over n. And from 1 to infinity. So since the union of a countable collection of measurable set is measurable, it tells us that uh, this 2 implies 1. And so 1 if and only if 2. Moreover, our 4 here, if and only if 1, if and only if 2 here, if and only if 3. So therefore, the four statements on the propositions are equivalent. So if I will be able to show that 1 implies 5, it means to say that 2, 3, 4 imply also the uh, statement number 5. So this is only, um, without loss of generality, I'm gonna uh, show only the um, statement 1 that implies statement 5. So we would have three different cases. Case 1, if C element of R, then what happened is we have this set here. I can have F inverse of C and this is equivalent to x in e such that f of x is less than or equal to c intersection with x element of e 
such that f of x is greater than or equal to c. So this is actually equivalent to this one. And observe that this one is measurable, this one is also measurable, implying that this is measurable. So let's go to case 2. What if um, c here is infinity? Then, what happened is, f inverse of um, infinity, that's the same as x in e, such that f of x equals infinity. And that's the same as the intersection of x in E, such that f of x is greater than n. Your n is from 1 to infinity. And um, this, is a um, this is a countable intersection of a measurable set, implying that this one is measurable. For number 3, if um, C here is negative infinity, then, then a set uh, f inverse of negative infinity that's the set of x in E such that f of x is equal to negative infinity. And that's the same as the intersection of the set of x in E such that f of x is less than negative n. And from 1 to infinity. And this is actually measurable and so this one is measurable. Meaning to say that um, the statement 1 implies statement 5 and so 2, 3, and 4 imply also with the statement 5 in the sense that 2, 3, and 4 are equivalent to statement 1. That's it. So what is now a Lebesgue measurable function or just measurable function? So an extended real valued function f defined on e is said to be Lebesgue measurable or simply measurable if the numen e of f is measurable so it should be that the domain is measurable and f here satisfies one of the four statements in proposition so the statements one to four so let's consider for example the constant function so meaning to say that uh, your e here is measurable and um your alpha is coming from r so we have a mapping from e to r defined by f of x equals alpha and um, that's for every x in e so this is a constant function so this one here is uh, measurable this is pretty obvious um why observe that um let's pick c here so if c here is greater than or equal to alpha you have your set x in e such that f of x is greater than c so if this f of x is greater than c and your c is greater than or equal to alpha, then this set is empty. Empty is measurable. Okay, what uh, happens if c is less than alpha? So we have the set x in E such that f of x is greater than c. And since c here is uh, less than alpha, it follows that this is actually our E. E here is measurable. Therefore, the constant function is a measurable function or a Lebesgue measurable function. That's it. So let's have example number two here. Um, let A be N set. Okay, and the characteristic function, um, chi sub A of the set A is defined by chi sub A of X equals 1 if X is in A. 0 if x is not in A. So, if A here is measurable, then so is the chi sub A. So, indeed, if we have um, C here in R, so if um, C here is less than 0, the set containing x in R, such that chi sub A of x is greater than C, if c is greater than or equal to 0 but less than 1, the set x in R such that chi sub A of x is greater than c, that's gonna be the A here. So if c here is greater than or equal to 1, then the set x in R such that chi sub A of x greater than c so that's gonna be empty so meaning to say that if x uh, so meaning to say that um if chi sub a is measurable it follows that a is also measurable 
So we will have one important result for the study of uh, Lebeg measurable function. <coughs> so this result says that uh, given that you have a function um, defined on a measurable set E and um, we say that this function is measurable if and only if for every open set O, the set, this one, the F inverse of O is the set of X in E such that F of X is in O. And this set here is also measurable. So observe that this um, F inverse of O is actually the inverse image of O under the F. Okay, so let's prove on this. Okay, suppose... For every uh, open set, F inverse of O is measurable. So we'll start first with the backward direction. Then what happened is, since each open interval, that's um, C to infinity, is open set, what, what does it mean? The F inverse of C to infinity is measurable for every C in R. So thus, F here is measurable. Okay, so let's try the, uh, the forward direction because this one here is the backward. So suppose F is measurable. So if F is measurable, then we let O be open set. So since this O here is, we assume to be open, uh, then we can write O as the union of this I sub K k from 1 to infinity your k here this one here is is countable collection of open bounded intervals and then um each i k is actually a intersection b with a equals um a k to positive infinity and your b is negative infinity to b k. So what happened? F here is measurable. This means to say that F inverse b k and F inverse a k are also measurable. Observe that your F inverse of O, I can have F inverse of the union of i k k from 1 to infinity. And so this is the same as the union from k of equals 1 to infinity of f inverse of bk plus, I'm sorry, intersection f inverse of ek. Now, um, this is measurable set. So in fact, this is a sigma algebra, meaning to say that the intersection holds. So, and the union also holds. This implies that f inverse of O is measurable. And so we have proven the claim. That's it. So if you have any questions or clarification, you can comment down there so that I would know and we can discuss on that. Okay, so we have this one last proposition or one claim for today's video. So we shall call this video as part one because we will continue that on the next video for part two for the rest of the properties for Lebesgue measurable function. Theorem here says that if you have a function f and that's a real valued function that is continuous on its domain E, then f is measurable. So this is pretty obvious. We can prove on this one. So we have um, the open set here O. So what does it mean? Um, since f here is continuous, um, f inverse of O, I can write that as E intersection of U for some u that is open which means to say that f inverse of o here is measurable because f inverse of u is oh, i'm sorry because f inverse of o is measurable so from the previous two um, proposition we have discussed earlier it automatically follows that f here is measurable that's it So that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching on this first part of the Lebeg measurable function video. We will continue this for the part two and thank you guys for supporting. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be updated on a lot of videos that I'll be uploading soon. Thank you and have a great day. Bye for now.